Let's all say a big welcome to Leanne, who has now joined WAPI. <laughs> Everybody say welcome. Welcome. Everybody together, welcome. 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 Fantastic. Welcome. welcome. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Right, Naya, so to start the session, we are going to ask everybody, welcome. Lovely to see you, Jasmine. We're going to say to everybody, what sci-fi book have you read or are you aware of? And you start with your name, okay? So, Naya, you are going to start first and foremost. Mm -hmm. So, um, hi, my name is Naya. I'm 10 years old. And uh, well, I actually haven't read this book, but I read it to my brother. Um, we got it from the library a few days ago, and it's called Look Up, and it's to do with space. Ooh. Wow, okay. Has anybody heard of Look Up? I have, yeah. That's actually one of the ones I was going to say. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. This is fantastic homework then, isn't it? Well done. You see, I haven't read it. But when we come to you, Leanne, we'll leave you to be the last person and then okay. you can say a bit more, okay? So thank you for that, Naya. So next we will go to, let's go to Olivia. Olivia, hi, Olivia. Lovely to see you. Okay. So tell me, have you read any sci-fi children's books at all? Um, hi, my name's Olivia. I'm 11 years old and I don't think I have read any of those books. Okay, well, hopefully Leanne's book will be the first one, yeah, okay. and the, or anything else that Leanne recommends. Thank you for that, Olivia. Next, we will go to Jasmine. Lovely to see you, Jasmine. How are you? Hi, um, I'm good. Um, so my name's Jasmine and um, I don't think I've read any cipher books. Okay, that doesn't, that's not a diss to you, Leanne, you know, we all have our individual <laughs> genres, it might be romance, it might be history, historical, so out of interest, those are two who haven't read, haven't read sci-fi books, what kind of books do you like reading, Olivia? And um, I like to read Jack and Wilson's story. Okay, books. and what genre would you put Jacqueline Wilson's book into? Like, um, Funny. Fun. Um, just, um. Well, I'll tell you what, we have a librarian here, our very own adorable Martha Lambert from Ealing Libraries is here. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm so happy you're here, Martha. What a lovely surprise. What genre would you put, help us out, Martha, what genre would you put Jacqueline Wilson's book into? everyday sort of drama sort of uh, you know teenage or some you know young children sort of funny some of them are funny some of them are, uh, uh, help social issues as well Fantastic. like the Tracy Beaker one you know, yes. about her, you know living in a home so um but she does it with humor so it's not yes, kind of like it, it is funny humor. every day they, humour to explain sort of situations that a lot of children are, are in. Okay. So they're, they're a mixture. Which one was she talking about? She was, which one did you which talk about? Which one did you mention, Jasmine? I didn't mention a specific one, but one of my favourites is probably Bad Girls. Bad Girls. Oh, yes, yeah. I know Bad Girls. I know Bad Girls. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. And Olivia, which books do you like then, if you haven't come across too much sci-fi? I mainly like murder and mystery books. Murder and mystery, wow, fantastic, fantastic, thank you. Have you got one in particular? Um, I, no, not really. Okay, that's cool. Right, well, let's go to... Let's go to Christian. Hi, Christian. Hi, hi, Grace. Um, I'm good. Um, Which books do you like to read? Do you like sci-fi? Do you know any sci-fi books or do you like any other books? Well, I know one children's sci-fi book I know is Aliens Love Underpants. Where? <laughs> what, where? I don't know. I can't remember what it's called. But yeah. I think I've heard of that one as well, you know. I think I they have. You have? Fantastic. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. And next we go to Tommy. Hi, Tommy. How are you doing? Um, hi. Um, um, I'm, yeah, so say say your name and say what, do you have any sci-fi books or any type of book that you like to read? Yeah, I've, um, I've read of um, The Last Magician. 
the last magician fantastic wonderful i think i think that is one i've come across as well thank you for that um tommy and then we're going to go to effie yeah <laughs> 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 that's the that's the thing about being anonymous you don't know what people are up to so have you read any have you read any sci-fi books or any what genre books do you like if not sci-fi if you do like sci-fi what sci i haven't read any books what no 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 don't, don't, don't. Re let's rewind this is being recorded <laughs> this it, it, you didn't hear that martha you know that's not true so, no. we, we've got a, a, a librarian in the house right listen even if you don't like reading books now although you do like writing it's interesting because effie's a prolific writer but she doesn't yeah. like reading books a lot but you actually did read some books and there are some books you like based on some films you like to watch or uh, you what you won a book once through a writing competition so think of a book that you've been given that you may have read a few years ago come on now oh um a few years ago i read um what's it called it's not really sci-fi it comes more under under like what was it's it? um once upon a time well sci-fi and fantasy some people link them together yeah. And they've remade it into films once upon, and there's so many versions. You've got Red Riding Hood, you've got Sleeping Beauty. So you quite like Once Upon a Time books. Thank you for that. Well done. And who have I not asked? Have we gone round completely? So Martha, I'm not gonna let you get away with this either. Martha, <laughs> do, you, do you have any particular books that you like in, in genre, whether it's sci-fi or? <laughs> like fantasy but i didn't come that well prepared so um <laughs> I, I think my favorite i would say is his dark materials oh, so the I'm subtle knife really and the golden compass um so i, I really um there's uh, some big themes in the books and each one becomes more and more complicated and the world building that philip Pullman brings and he makes you think about religion and life and the universe and everything so if you like um a series of books where the characters develop and then also you like the world and the and the different perceptions what you think is true changes completely as the book goes on through the series then i would recommend um recommend that series of books okay. um, and i love harry potter who doesn't? Yeah, I'm surprised you said world. Harry Potter. You know, yeah. Tommy, you like Harry Potter too. You know, it's very interesting because as a child, I mean, I probably wouldn't re recommend all of these books today, but as a child, you know, I just wanted to escape anything which has anything to do with fairy tales and fantasy. And I'm not surprised if he likes Once Upon a Time. I loved Hans Christian Andersen. Absolutely loved fairy tales. You know, mm. as I grew up, I used to start reading more historic books uh, the color purple uh, biographies as a child i loved reading biographies but when i was very young it was fairy tales okay athena let's go to you and then we'll go to leanne thank you so what books do you like reading now or even yeah now is good enough um i like science fiction and i like um, murder mysteries and oh. one of my favorite uh, science fiction books is um a wrinkle in time okay has anyone heard uh, of a wrinkle in time do you know that book yeah. Wonderful. It's all of this is going to make me go and do some research because yeah. I feel a bit naive at the moment. So thank you for that, Athena. And now we go back to Leanne. So yeah. Leanne, you were saying as a child. Yeah, so probably in my teens, I guess, it would be the definitely the Harry Potter series. I think as you mentioned, it was that whole idea of ex escapism and fantasy that's kind of what I like and that's kind of my book is more lean towards yeah the fantasy side of things as well and um, as Martha said as well I've re more recently his dark materials is definitely um, I watch the tv series and then I've got the books as well so I'm reading that at the moment wow thank you yeah. thank you for that I know Benjamin Zafana as a child he said he was bullied and he was made fun of and he was a loner so when he was at school he didn't have many friends and uh so he used to spend his time being amongst animals and then he mm. started to follow and he, he loved animals he loved turkeys he loved cats and he started to follow a cat just to see what it did and he, he actually said this when he came to weapon he said it spent all its time sleeping so he ended yeah. up becoming a vegan because it was 
his cat, the cats and the turkeys, believe it or not, that were his friends. So it's yeah. interesting how our personal journeys, what we go through as children, inspire our subject matter and, mm. and the direction in life we often choose yeah, to what take. What we're going to so do, just that. as a kind of icebreaker, we are going to come to a quiz, okay? The quiz okay. is just like something to warm us up. Now, now so the first science question. This is a woman. We've got about five of them. What is the distance between the Earth and the Sun? Is it A, 50 miles? Is it B, 93 million miles? Or is it C, 1 million miles? Have a think about this. Okay. All right. So let's come out of this now. So is it A, B, or C? What's the right answer? You can either put it into the chat bar. Or you can put the answer, say the answer, unmute and say it. Okay, well, let's, let's put it like this. I'm going to see, yeah, someone's put, we've got one answer here. We've got B. Okay, we've got B. Hey, give yourselves a clap. Well <laughs> done. B is the right answer. Excellent. Well done. So, Next. So basically, what is a material that will not carry an electric charge cord? Is it A, insulator, B, wool, or C, metal? There we go. So what's the answer? Right. So far, everybody has put A. You lot are bright sparks. Does anybody disagree with A? You're t right. Let's have a look and see. A insulator. Woo! Excellent. So now we go to the next one. What are the poles of a magnet called? North and south. Ant and deck. <laughs> North and east. What are the poles of a magnet called? Okay. We've all got A. Wow. Nobody, none of you think it's Ant and Deck. <laughs> Let's have a look and see. Very well done. Give yourselves another clap. Excellent. Woo. Now let's go further. If you throw a ball across a field, which forces are most likely to cause it to stop? Friction, friction and gravity, a rubbish throw. <laughs> We've I think you've all put B, friction and gravity. Interesting. Let's have a look and see if you're right. Well done, B, friction and gravity. Excellent. Here we go. Who came up with the three laws of motion? I had to have a discussion with my husband over this. You weren't sure, were you? And I was, I was, you, know what? you don't know this one. I was so pleased because I knew this one. So is it A, Professor Brian Cox? Is it B, Albert Einstein, or is it C, Isaac Newton? Oh, you're all such great scientists here. Wow, this is very impressive. Isaac Newton, well done, excellent. Hooray, give yourselves um, a clap. I put together a little video, okay? Oh, thank you. And you're okay. gonna see <laughs> things here. I, okay, here we go then, enjoy. This is Leanne. <laughs> Um, so, so tell us, uh, you know, sort of the, the designs you do or what type of designs do you do or products do you design for and who's, who's your ideal customer? Yeah, so, um, so under the name of Leanne Creative, I produce greeting cards and gifts um, and all of the gifts, um, all of the designs feature my own portraits and illustrations that feature black and Asian men, women and children. And the, the theme of the collection is royalty. So it's all about empowerment and representing us as kings, queens, princesses and princes. So it's, it's for anyone that wants to feel empowered, whether it's on your birthday or just because, or you want to send it um, off to someone that needs a little bit of a boost. Right. Um, so it, it, I think it's, it's really important to share gifts and cards that represent the recipient as well. So that's, that's kind of my niche. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think you're right because for so long, and obviously with all the beautiful work that's out there, but starting to see us on 
you know, our black faces on products and services. Um, I think when you and I first spoke and I said to you that, you know, even noticing the amount of adverts now that start to put black people in, yeah. you know, showing us that we're doing the shopping or we're buying insurance. <laughs> it's like, we exist all of a sudden. Yeah, we've always been there. <laughs> that's what we've been out there for a long time so you know i think you know in terms of what your work doing and that was one thing that struck me when i came across yourself um on on instagram that when i saw the imagery that you're putting out there um that, that i just thought yeah this this is so needed and with regards to you know how you're you design and the imagery you're putting out do you feel it's part of even like a storytelling that you're that you're doing or a message that you're you're trying to give to black people as well mm, yeah definitely because a lot of the time we're portrayed in quite either a stern way or quite one di dimensional. So I wanted to have images that showed us smiling, different hairstyles, different ages, sizes, skin tones, just to show the diversity and the, even within the black, black community, there is still so much different um, diversity. So I wanted to show that story and then also the link um, to Queendom and Kingdom as well. I didn't want it to, a lot of the time our history starts off in the, in the western world as slavery yes. so i wanted to go right back to the kings and queens and celebrate them all the way up to now and so that's that's really important story that i wanted to share great stories and things that yeah we we need to see and especially right now and um there you go and then we've got some of leanne's images okay we're going to see where it moves. It's going to keep moving. It's going to go round. There you go. <laughs> Look at this. So, so you can actually order Christmas cards from Leanne. You can order cups, coasters. Leanne's going to tell you more about this as well as her book. The range is incredible. Purse you can order from Leanne. Christmas is coming. Yeah. <laughs> so many beautiful... Fantastic, <laughs> long time, isn't it? Who's going to go first and ask Leanne a question? Who would like to ask her a question? Hmm? Christian, go ahead, please. Okay, so my, my question is, like, what, was there something in the real world that influenced you to write the book? Like, what, what was it that you based the book off of? Yeah, cool. Um, so that's a good question. Um, so I actually started writing it um, at the beginning of lockdown. Um, and I was speaking to my friend about, um, you, you know, we had to be quite isolated and everyone had to stay apart. And um, so part of um, the story in, in my world is the two aliens are from two very different worlds. And it was about them trying to reach each other or how are they going to find each other in their different worlds so yeah it was a, a little bit of a um, real world experience there but in a fantasy setting fantastic okay. thank you for that thank you thank you thank you that was a nice response okay <laughs> thank you christian <laughs> naya you you can ask your question now uh, is this the first ever book you've wrote 
Yes, yeah, it's the first book that I've ever written and published myself in terms of like a physical book. But um, when I was younger, I used to love writing stories and um, just for myself, really, for my friends and family um, and poetry as well. I had one of my poems published in Aquila book, Aquila magazine, which is still going on now. Um, oh, wow. So that was the first time I had anything published in a, in a, in a magazine. Um, Have you got that poem on you at hand or? I don't, not to hand, no, okay. I think Gosh, I was I about 10. That. That's amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> um, it's a bluff somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. But again, it was all about um, magical creatures and monsters. I actually had a dream about um, some monsters coming down to my grandma's house and they slept on their heads and they had hair on their elbows. And so I decided to make a poem about that. Ooh, um, so you're inspired up. by a dream. That's incredible. Yeah. You know, sometimes dreams do inspire us as well. <laughs> That's Definitely. fantastic. So, Jasmine, have you got a question? Anything at all? Um, how long did it take you to write the book? So, right, um, so the, the actual story itself um, took me about a week or so, because um, I think once I'm in the in the zone, so to speak, I, it kind of flows. And because it's fantasy, there were no rules. I can kind of make up words, make up characters. They can look anything that they like. So it flowed quite quickly, so about a week. But because I did the illustrations myself um, and then juggling that on, alongside my business and everything, that was probably the longest. So that took about six, seven months to actually get to the finished product. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for that, Jasmine. Thank you, Leanne. Um, Olivia? Tommy, have you got questions? Effie, any three of you, which one's going to ask first? Um, when did you start dancing? Oh, okay. Um, I started dancing really young, actually. Um, from about the age of five, I started off doing ballet and tap, and then I went on to do jazz. And then I went to um, the breaking convention when I was about 10 or no, sorry, about 12, 13. Um, and that's when they do hip hop and street dance. And I literally fell in love with that. Um, so from there, I took it a bit more seriously. So I'd say about 18, 19, that's when I started to get more serious and do um, shows and performances in that end. Yeah, and I've been dancing ever since. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Tommy, okay. So what question would you like to ask Leanne, Tommy? Um, okay, where do you get your ideas from? Very good question too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I usually, it's a lot of the time it's from dreams. <laughs> um, wow. so I think that, yeah, I have quite vivid dreams, <laughs> quite strange dreams sometimes. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. And then um, because I love fantasy, as I said, I like um, things like Harry Potter and just that whole escapism. So it's, I get inspiration from lots of different places and then kind of tweak, tweak them to make them my own, really. Wow, you know. um my question have you got any like end end term goals for like your book or any ideas for your next like creation of book oh great yeah so um as i said this is my my first book but i definitely want to make this as part of the series so i'm in the process of writing the next three so um wow. they should continue on from this story as well um, with the same characters but just different experiences um, and different lessons as well. So it's going to um, be a series? Yes, yeah. So it'll be the adventures of Mackley and Siva as aliens and the different Wonderful. lessons that they learn as they grow up, yeah. Wonderful. I've got one, yeah. The names, how did you come up with those names of the two characters? They're quite, they're literally made up. I think um, because I wanted two opposite characters um so Mackley is the grey alien and he's all round and squidgy so <laughs> I wanted a name that sounded a bit like it flowed so Mackley with the L's and the double L's and then Siva is more of a pointy alien and she comes from Stiplop and that's like quite angular shapes and everything with okay. the V and Siva I thought that was something that sounded like the character really. <laughs> yeah, it's good thank you. Thank you for that. And that's a good question too. Yeah. Martha, are you ready? What was, about, what was about picture books that made you want to do something 
for young was it something about younger children did you all did you always have a love for picture books is that something that you loved growing up um yeah as um growing up myself yeah I did love um picture books and because I've got a, a background in illustration and I've illustrated a lot of other children's books and um, that was kind of the route that I wanted to take so yeah this this particular book is aimed at around five to nine year olds um, okay. and like bright, bright colors and um, and it's a it's a good way to interact and get the personalities of the characters out there as well and um, so I wanted to bring in my own illustration style as well so that that tied into picture books Mm -hmm. My question is, um, would you be willing to do some, perhaps do some more talks with the with the library service as well? Ah, in the future? Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. As okay. I said, I'm a new author, so I'm, I'm very much up for that, yeah. That's amazing. Brilliant. It's a fantastic I love you to being positive. I'm so happy yeah. that Mark suggested that, Martha, because Thank we you. need to get your work out there. And you know what? I know Leanne as somebody who was always very shy initially, many, many years <laughs> ago, very shy. And you have just come out of yourself. And I will say that it isn't easy to actually get a children's book written, not because we're not gifted or we haven't got the ability, but it's such a competitive field. And then we have all these mainstream publishers that haven't really been taking note of our work, your work, my work, and the works even of other children here, because I know you're all gifted writers and creators, um, but to be an illustrator, to be an author, to market your own book, that is threefold. So how do you manage to balance drawing and writing and marketing your book? How do you manage it, Leanne? That's my question. I think um, because I'm, I'm a freelancer as well with my design work. So that idea of publishing and marketing myself is, has always been there in just in terms of getting work. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that, that side of things. And then I, as part of my design work, I write a blog as well. So I do like a monthly blog. So I've, mm -hmm. I've kind of always kept my hand in, in writing. Okay. As well. and I and I enjoy it literally I really enjoy it I love meeting people going to events and so that's part of networking as well okay. Um, okay. and yeah hey, that's a good question great yes who's this hey, it's Christian's mum oh fantastic Jodie it's lovely Jody. to see hi I just wanted to ask Leanne a question so in mm. terms of um kind of publishing is there anything that you do to kind of support young people that maybe want to publish their own story is there anything you can do in terms of supporting them maybe with the illustration and through that process as well yeah um in terms definitely in terms of illustration I can give my mm. my tips and ideas and things I've learned along the way I'm I've had some training I've had training in um, graphic design I did a diploma in graphic design but in terms of book illustrations it's quite self-taught and quite organic so I definitely okay be happy to work with, with kids along that um in terms of actually publishing this is my first book in terms of publishing myself so I'm still learning along the way but uh, yeah definitely happy to share what I've learned on on the on to add on to your question Jodie what I think is good is that we can bring you back to WAPI either mm. through Zoom or we have when things calm down a bit and we're able to socially distance and do a safe WAPI we can bring you in for you to do an illustrator's workshop for us oh, definitely. on the yeah. publishing side well jd we 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 know wappy knows how to get you all published because we've done it and we'll continue mm. to do it but there's no reason why we cannot work with leanne and ealing libraries to do something as part of like i don't know apply for funding and then we can you know get your work out there individually so one of the things i think we want to do all these workshops we're doing isn't just to please wappy it's to please the children and parents we want you to develop your own books you know, so it's really hard to be disciplined. And I know that because you have other things going on, schoolwork, you might have other clubs, parents are busy. It's not always, you know, sort of like consistent, but it's OK because it, it, I wrote, it sometimes it takes years to finish. I'm still I'm still trying to do my autobiography. And this is something I'm going to put together in the first next few weeks. So it can take months, years. Isn't that isn't that right, Leanne? You know, the most important thing is go out and buy the book. <laughs> 
but we are doing this. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll read the very yeah. first page, this one on the left, and then somebody can take over. Mackley okay. is a curious and imaginative 10 year old alien from Mimpal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he lives with his mum, dad, and huge family of 15 brothers and 10 sisters in a rubble hub at the top of a very high hill. Who's going to read next? It says here, welcome to Mimpal. Everything in Mimpal is dark and grey, and that's the way they like it. It is calm and relaxed and everybody lives life slowly, enjoying the simple things. Because after all, your imagination is where the real excitement happens. Wonderful, fantastic. So let's move the story on, okay? Um, every day before school, Makili and his family dream up a magical stories of strange animals. The animals have just two legs, two arms, two little eyes with their hair sprouting from the tops of their heads. Very strange. They have 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. They wear strange little windows on the top of their nose. They leak when they are hot and shake when they're cold. Makali has a vivid information. Fantastic. So Tommy, read this and then we'll get Leanne to sort of tell us the story afterwards. So, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, then you read well, well, my name is Siva and I'm from Step Love. <laughs> We have rainbows and and slushes with marshmallows on top. Um, it's crazy around here, and there's so much to do. Your your world seems much calmer. Calmer. I'm jealous of you. Brilliant. Siva is a nine-year-old independent young alien. She lives alone in a rubble hub next to many other rubble hubs. Stitlop is a, the complete opposite of Mimpal. It is fast-paced, bright, and full of activity and colour. Everyone lives on their own, and there's no need for imagination because everything they could ever dream of right there for the taking. And it says here, welcome to Stitlock. I think what we should now do, it says here, welcome to Stitlock. Keep busy, keep moving. I think we need to get Leah now to read, at least read a bit of your story and then you tell us, okay? Because that will just help the flow. All right? Oh, okay. Um, so I can, I can maybe read the, the last pages. Excellent, um, excellent, excellent. Thank you. And so this is right at the end, once they've worked out their differences and they're happy with looking different from everyone else. Um, so Makali says, I'm different and special in my own little way. I don't look like you and that's okay. I love every part of my unique look. I'm proud that I'm different and I don't go by the book. I can't hide it any longer because that's what makes me me. And I want the whole world to look at me and see a beautiful alien with lots to say. We're all different and that's the best way. Wonderful. <laughs> I think what we're going to do, Leanne, fantastic. Give Leanne a big clap for the story. And for those of you who managed to read, I know it wasn't easy. Fantastic. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get Wappy to buy copies of your book, right? Oh, okay. And then I'm going to send a copy to every child <laughs> uh. <laughs> part of our lockdown life. Yeah. So the, what I'm then going to ask parents to do is to get their youngsters just to read a section from the book because at least oh, they're in their own great. home and they can just give their own like a critical review. Yes. And this will yeah. help their literacy and language skills. So we this won't be necessarily now, but it will be in the next say month. We will get the book ordered. We've got. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's amazing. It's yeah so that so uh, that's fantastic i'm really really pleased i mean we've put this together very quickly it's mm -hmm. not easy with technology yeah. so before we go is that Karen? have you got anything you'd like to ask and athena have you got anything you'd like to ask so first carolyn and then athena and then jody thank you um, i'm not sure but i know what 
Um, to, 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 I was just going to say, like, were you encouraged a lot by your parents or did you find you had a lot of encouragement from peers or where was your main source of encouragement? Uh, yeah, definitely from my parents, um, in particular my mum as well. Um, she's a teacher, so um, oh, in terms brilliant. of writing and um, expressing myself, it's even, even through dance as well. Um, so yeah. I, I was definitely exposed to a lot of creativity and encouraged to express myself. Yeah, so it's from a young oh. age. <laughs> it's a yeah. family thing, isn't it? Fantastic, yeah. And, and I think question. like when you do those creative things like dance and things, you tap into something else as well. It brings out other creative dimensions. Definitely. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you for that, Carolyn. And um, Athena, have you got a question now? Um, where did you get the idea for like what your characters would look like? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, again, it was quite um, random, I think. <laughs> um, I think with, when you allow yourself to just escape and anything goes, I think once the pencil hits the paper, you can really get creative. And as I said, I wanted them to look quite opposite. So you've got the rounded shapes of Macaulay and then you've got the pointed shapes of, of Siva. So I went along with that and added a few extra eyes, a few extra noses, <laughs> um, and then played around with colour as well. They look like Martians, don't they? <laughs> Aliens. Aliens, definitely. And Jody? Yeah, hi. it's not really a question, but I just want to say to Leanne, thank you kind of from jumping on this platform. Um, it's really lovely. Um, to kind of read and hear some of your story it's amazing and to kind of encourage our you know our children you know especially my son being a, a young black boy as well so um making him see that he's you know able to do so I'd like to say thank you and also to Wappy as well so you know Grace thank you so much for giving them the platform I know I'm not always I'm constantly busy. I work yeah. seven days a week. We but have actually, to. It's I fueled you know, his learning and his creativity. And um, it's a really good platform because there's a lot of things, you know, that we don't want our children to do. Absolutely. Um, this is kind of almost like the safety net for our children. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you, you know, to both of you. Uh, thank you. Very thank much. you. Uh, you know, I'm really grateful that you all have come at short notice. And I do appreciate that you're all busy. So everything you do is well noted and we're uh, right. really inspired by your work you know so keep on I think we've given you the first platform and yeah you know, bring you back again to do this illustrators workshop so so enjoy your evening let's give let's let's reveal ourselves if we want to to say a big thank you to Leanne this is your chance to say a big thank you and clap if you can Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. So much. Woo! See you soon, okay? <laughs> yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye, Carolyn. Bye, everybody. Bye, Hina. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Jeff.